if you take anything from this video, do not work for Amazon, man. <laughs> How you guys doing? It's your boy Devin today. You know we're back with the video, man. I couldn't leave you guys hanging. You know, we're like a family here, all right? So, I mean, I'm going to get right into it, man. This is a story time of the worst job ever. And where did I work, bro? I worked at Amazon. And I know, you know, you might think the worst jobs are food industry jobs, retail jobs, and low-key retail might be up there, man, because there ain't nothing worse than somebody getting on your damn nerves. It's nine in the morning. It's too early for all that. You know what I mean? But this job is the worst and I'm ranking it at the worst based on the fact that they don't care about you, bro. They don't give a damn. And I'm going to get into why, man. So <laughs> keep in mind, I only, <laughs> I only worked there for like, like five months. Five, eh, hold up. I don't know. For, forget it. Whatever. So I am a driver. I was a driver for Amazon. So you would think driving is an easy job. You drive, you know, just to work you guys through a day, you have a scanner with you and it's your GPS. It's everything. You, your GPS is uh, on here. Your, your scanners on here, everything. You drive to the houses, you scan the packages, you drop them off, you leave, you go to your next stop, right? So the most annoying thing about this job is the fact that they track everything. They track speed. They track acceleration. They literally track everything. They track if you have your damn seatbelt on. And I get it as for safety. But the crazy thing is, if you uh, violate like speeding or you do something like take your seatbelt off and a vehicle's moving like as a habit, they knock off points for you. You have a it's a point system. If you get a certain amount of points knocked off, you come in the next day and they tell you you're an extra. What does that mean? I'm gonna tell you. So when you're an extra, you literally have them load out and they send you home. At a certain time, I was Ubering to work. So how do you think that makes me feel when I got to go to work and you guys told me I got to go home right away? I just spent 30 damn dollars to get here and now I got to go home? Yeah, you got the wrong one, bro. So, and the other thing, it's not as accurate. Sometimes you'll be going the speed limit the whole day. They, uh, You go to them tomorrow and they're like, oh, you're speeding. But I wasn't speeding. My first week of that job, I had no speed in violations. The next week going forward, there were always days, you know, th there's some days where you are, you're going five over or whatever. But for the most part, they literally, it seems like they're just lying and their system is off. And I even had coworkers there who literally, I would see them talking to people and they're like, oh, I've never had a uh, speed violation or anything. What the hell is this? So that was the biggest thing about the job. Actually, no, it's not. That was one of the biggest things about the job. And I'm going to get into the second thing, which is they do not care where they have you. They don't care where they have you. They don't care what the weather's looking like. They do not care. That might be the title of this video, low key. They don't care. So many times have I been in some Camp Crystal Lake type environment and I can't see. I can't see anything. I'm actually going to upload some pictures, man. I could not see anything. Go ahead and take a look at this one, man. Yep. Yep, that's them. That's them. That's what they do. They put you there and they don't care. There was a time where you guys seen Curse the Cowardly Dog? If you guys have seen Courage the Cowardly Dog, you know they live in the, the middle of nowhere. And you cannot see. And when you're in those Amazon Prime vans, if you try to look out your window, it's like the window is so big and the like it, it shows your reflection back. So as you're trying to look out the window, it's hard to see. The only place you can really look is forward and you can't see. And they wanted me to, for this particular stop, they wanted me to get out of the car, walk between this big tree, I think, and this farm. And like, it's so weird because he had like a, like a thing, like a little house in front of the farm, but they wanted me to go behind it because as you guys don't know, there's a hot spot. Like if your house is right there and I'm not right in front of your door, I can't press deliver. You know, some people like to out of habit go up to it and while they're walking up to the door, press, you know, I delivered it just to get it out of the way. You have to walk to the door though. So they wanted me to walk to this scary ass farm where it's dark 
you know, I don't got no flashlight, I, I, nothing, nothing on me but my phone. And my phone flashlight wasn't even bright enough. And I'm calling them and I'm like, bro, I'm not getting out of the car. And, you know, I ain't scared, but I mean, you know, it's dark. I'm scared, you know, but it's all good. So I'm calling them, right? I'm like, I can't see. Can you guys have the customer come out? Because I try to call the customer to be like, hey, can you come out? Like, I can't see anything. And they're like, oh, just blah, blah, blah. So you want me to get out this car so I can end up on Channel 2 News? Nah, nobody. Mm -mm. It was so horrible. But this happened so often. It was just like, at this point, you expect it. Because they have you in a lot of rural areas. I call the country. Like, they have you in a lot of these country areas where, you know, the driveways are, are horrible. They're so steep. The areas are dark. You can't see where you're going. And then, like, what's so bad, sometimes they give you vans. Like, I'm like this is a driver's seat and a passenger seat. In between those, usually there's a sliding door. I always went through that sliding door. But they always wanted you to get out of the car and open the side door. I, I never felt comfortable doing that. And I felt more comfortable in dangerous, dangerous areas versus being in the country. Because we all have up until 10 hours to do our shift and get everything done. But you don't want to be out there past dark. There's so many times where I had to get out and it was so dark and it was like that situation I just explained. Or there's some big ass dog, like some dog from Sandlot. I can hear barking, but I can't see. You know, I'm five, five. I'm small, man. I'm not, I'm not trying to die out here. I'm just trying to get my money and leave. You know, but I will say this. There were some good days when it's sunny and when you're in the nice residential don't your areas, bro. It is nice. And it's just, it's, it's nice to be able to, because sometimes you get bad routes. Sometimes you get good routes. When you're in the nice residential don't your areas, bro, it's nice. This is a good summer job. This is a shitty winter job. Overall, I don't think it's a good job at all. But if I had to do it, I'd rather do it in the summer. You know what I mean? And man, literally. I'm going to go into this next point. They cut hours without saying anything. They cut hours without saying anything. After Christmas, they cut my hours. I was working like one or two days a week. Literally. Bro, it makes no sense how bad they are with this. And then they try to make it seem like, oh, well, I mean, maybe it'll help because you have had speeding violations. or Bro, just stop. Stop the cap. Stop the cap, bro. It, it, it's not that at all. And overall, like I said... This was a job I'd rather do in the summer versus the winter because they're just so like it's under they're so under stress and it's just it's it's not good, man. It's just not good. Like I'm literally like losing my thoughts trying to tell you everything that I went through at this job. And the other thing is that so you go there and we would go there. We clock in at 10 and then we wouldn't leave until 11 because they still have to do loadout and everything. So one day I was an extra. I told you guys what an extra was earlier. I was an extra. And they literally told me, hey, we don't have a route for you. So they did something called what, what they call the flex route. So I didn't know what the hell that was. It's kind of like flex routes are usually kind of like, you know how people do Uber? You can do flex, Amazon flex. You get Somebody knows what it is. Anyway, usually when you drive the vans, they have color-coded bags, right? Color-coded bags. You know, they kind of sorted by neighborhood and blah, 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 all that extra stuff, yada, yada. So you organize your vans and put the bags where they need to. So whatever needs to go first, you need to put towards you, whatever is the last you need to put towards the back. And they had, they didn't have me do that. They gave me 80 to 100 packages with no damn bags whatsoever. In a van, usually people do Amazon Flex from a car. So if I have 80 loose packages... And I'm driving a van. What do you think happens to those packages? Like, I'm not trying to make this seem like door to where I want you to shout the right answer. But, like, we kind of know. You put some, like, anybody who grocery shops knows when you drive, everything tumbles. So, I have 80 to 100 packages from multiple different neighborhoods all, like, colliding together and, and literally, like, like throwing themselves all over the place. And, like, nothing got broken. But it's literally, like, all these packages are mixed up. And it's so crucial because it like it's so it's it makes everything slow down because now I have to go through each individual package as it's showing up on my phone on the device they give you and I have to look for that specific like address and it slowed everything down on top of that man I got a flat tire because somebody put a goddamn rock in the middle of the street so I had a flat tire 
and I literally had all these packages and I'm barely like halfway done. So we literally uh, had to change the tire. That took a while. So I'm trying to get the rest of my stuff done and it's getting late. They called three people to do rescues. And it, if you don't know what a rescue is, when you're taking too long to get your packages, they offer people a chance to literally come help you. And they get like $25 for every 25 stops. It's BS, but whatever, because 25 stops takes like an hour. So we couldn't figure out what stops went where, because think about this. If you have a package here and um, your next package is your next package says 10 minutes away, that would suck because that could be close. And then that's 10 minutes away. And then your next package could be 10 minutes away because we so we couldn't grab these at random. And I would put the picture on the screen of what we did next. But I don't you know, I, these people, I'm sure don't want to be you know, on, you know, on, on a video, but we literally had to take the packages out and put them in some guy's yard and sort them out alphabetically and then figure out like where these were at. And it took all day. I didn't clock out until 11. No, I didn't get home until 11 PM. But keep in mind, Amazon told me that, um, we didn't have to deliver past eight. And then they told me, no, the lady who was working on that, I'm gonna, not going to say her name, but she was a little iffy. She told me we could stay out until 10, even though I was still out past 10. And it sucks when you have to be out late and then you have an hour to get back to the station. And keep this in mind. I had to drive far back. Then you have to get gas and then go back to the station. And when you get back to the station, they make you do all this stuff like checking in with everybody. Like it makes everything seem so long. But the lady told me 10 p.m. Now, the overtime was great. My check was looking kind of nice for one week, especially because we got paid every week. But think about this. Amazon's telling me I don't be, have to be out past eight. She's telling me I have, to, I have to stay out until 10. I literally took my time, bro. I wasn't dealing with it. And what's crazy is that ne the next day, the other manager told me that I should have been done. So y'all just lying now to get me to deliver stuff so you guys don't have to deal with uh, the packages that were, that were sent back. You know, like it, it seems so sketchy that they do stuff like that. But man, I'm done with that. Let me move on to the 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 nail in the, like what really put the nail in the coffin. Strike three, man. On this particular day where it was snowing. Oh man, I, I can't remember like it was yesterday. I I'm gonna fast forward because I had a bunch of stuff to do. I was actually moving through my shift. I was cutting through the shift. I was literally getting all my packages done because it was snowing. I did not want to be out there all day. And I was in like Barnhart or something. And it's like kind of the, my bad. It was kind of the country still. You know what I mean? So literally I pull up to this driveway and I start going up. And once I'm all the way up, I realize it's a tight driveway and it's an uphill driveway. There's a car there and everything, but I'm looking behind me and I'm like, okay, I can pull and turn back into the spot and go down the hill because I'm not driving backwards. I'm not going back. I'm not just going to look back and go down because it's already snowing. I'm not trying, I'm not dealing with that. And you couldn't really do it that way anyway. If, if I was going to do that, I would be having to drive backwards for like 30 seconds. I'm not doing that. Sounds like a little bit of time, but it was like uphill. It was icy. Nah. So I deliver the package, right? I get in the car. I start turning back in my, as I'm turning back, the van is tilted. I feel it tilt. So I stop. I stop putting it in park. I get out and I realize, oh shit, I'm stuck. Now keep in mind, I did get back in. I tried to, and as I was going back, it was like, it was, it was so weird. I wish I could show you guys the driveway. I'm going to put pictures up on what it looked like after I explain this, but I try to really accelerate so I can go backwards. It literally was I was stuck and it was like lifted in the back by the bumper. So I accelerate to the point where I'm still stuck. But as I'm stuck, I literally start sliding down the hill. I stop again. I get out. Oh, shit. I'm still stuck. This is not good. I'm trying to leave and it's snowing. I literally get back in to go back more. But because one of the tires is lifted up, it's sliding down the hill. And I literally had to get out and, and just like think like, I don't, I'm not trying to go down this hill, whatever it takes, but I'm not trying to go down this hill. I'm going to put a picture up for you guys in a second. So that's like, literally like there was this lady's little like cheap gate in front of it and the van kind of hit it. 
but it, it was like a little cheap gate. But that's like the the front of a hill. It was gonna keep sliding because at this point I backed in, and then there's I could have tried turning, but it was tilted already. And then once I tried to go back more, it started driving like going down the hill. Like I'm not even kidding. It was so scary. But the thing is, I could have died. And it makes no sense because they didn't care. And keep in mind, like, I had issues with my phone. So I had to use the company phone. And what is it? Their phone doesn't work. And this has happened on more than one occasion. When I'm in these country, area, country areas, they literally lose signal. And then they act like it's your fault for not responding to them. So I had, actually had to contact my girlfriend and literally my family to try to reach out to my boss. Because I had a hotspot. And this hotspot literally will work on anything but like calls it would work on messenger and everything so i was calling them to reach out to him and he literally told them i'm gonna fire this guy because he's not reaching out to me bro do you not see the effort that i'm trying to go through like come on now so to fast forward guys pretty much he literally he's literally talking to me and he's like hey you know you've been sitting there for 40 minutes well no 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 crap like no like i i know this i'm i'm here and he's literally more worried about the packages than me. He's like, well, is the van okay? And now people aren't going to get their packages. Bro, are you going to ask if I'm good? <laughs> like, it, it makes no sense, bro. You literally, you're the money. You're Mr. Krabs in the flesh. Money, money, money. Like, it makes no sense that you don't care about somebody else's life. You care about these damn packages. I know what I don't care about. These damn packages. It's probably like some some a jump rope or something you think i care about these packages no i don't care about these packages so literally i stayed there until nighttime in the country two hours away from the station two hours like not two hours away probably like an hour and like 15 minutes or so i'm you know i'm kind of exaggerating my bad my bad but i'm far away from my house i'm far away from the station and i don't see this guy until night and i'm like okay i'm in a warm car but it made me nervous sitting in a car that was tilted so the dude literally came he got me out and i told the man i told the man i just you guys need to start caring about you guys need to really start caring about your employees it it, it, it made no sense man it made no sense at all and guys that being said i would never work for amazon if i were you guys if you guys want to go ahead and work for them, hey, everybody has different experiences, bro. But they literally don't give a damn about anybody. From my experience, bro. If I had to do it all over, bro, I will go to McDonald's. Nah, I ain't going to go to McDonald's before I go back. I'll do something else before I, I go back to Amazon. But guys, I hope you enjoyed the story, man. I hope you guys don't got no shitty job or anything like that. But hey, if you like this video, go ahead and give it a like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time. And I'ma get it right Dead on sight like